Okay, good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday morning, and good morning, all you cats and kittens. Anybody else watching Tiger King on Netflix? Okay, the crazy things we are doing during this pandemic. So, good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining me for another podcast and really sort of taking a deeper dive into some super practical tips that we can implement today to help manage, drive, advance, secure our careers at the moment. And yes, we are still in unprecedented times right now. And, you know, we, Pam and I are trying to be a resource for you, you know, during this really difficult challenging time. And so again, this is interactive. This is all for you. This is all about you. And, you know, we are now in, I don't know, our third week, fourth week, we've got a few more weeks to go. And who knows sort of what that new normal is going to look like afterwards. And so just trying to navigate this is, uh, takes a village. So we are that village for you. And so today, Part four of how to create a career survival kit in a crisis, because that is what we are all experiencing right now. So it's going to be a very similar format. And so we are going to get started. And with the first thing that we talk about every time is something to celebrate, because there is always something to celebrate, even amidst a pandemic. And so this is the time to share good news, wins of all sizes, how you are you know, lending a helping hand, helping support somebody else during this really challenging time. What are some fun activities that you have now learned how to do with your kids? Anybody here master you know, fifth grade math <laughs> with your kids? Because now you know, a lot of you are probably homeschooling. So I just want to open up the mics and start off with some positivity to get our minds right, to get us focused, to get us also focusing on, on some good news, because I'm sure like a lot of you, um, we can take the news sort of in small doses. The news is not great at the moment. And it is, I think for a lot of us, it is hitting closer and closer to home. So. In order to make that shift, let's start off with some positive news. Who would like to share? Anybody? I'll jump in. Um, I've been really enjoying some of the online classes outside of this sort of thing, but more of a learning opportunity to use the time in a constructive way. Um, and it's called or whoever hasn't ever been on it. It's called um, Skillshare.com. And it's been really fun. I feel like I'm a student again and back picking up, having the time to dig in. And um, I don't know. It's, some of it's what I know and some of it, I just needed a refresher. So it's been really nice. That, and it's a two month free thing and then you can continue on if you want. So it's a nice resource. That is fantastic. And that's also one of the things that we talked about on Monday is learn something new. You know, take advantage of this time and take advantage of the fact that now just about everything and anything that you have ever wanted to know or learn is now available online. And so it, I mean, it keeps you mentally sharp. It really sort of gives you that opportunity to, um, to give you more tools in your toolbox, so to speak. And it is also, look, I mean, learning is not just for the kids. Homeschooling is not just for the kids. All of us should be taking advantage. So great job. Who else would like to share? You can also share by typing in the chat room. And my business partner, Pam, is, is actively typing away in the chat room to also answer questions and to engage with you. And so, um, again, this is super interactive. So who would like also to unmute and tell us some more good news? Anybody? All right, you can think about it. There's gonna be more time to share good news. So put your thinking caps on. 
Be I'll, ready. I'll share, Coach Amy. Go ahead. Um, there are many companies out there that are reaching out to both Amy and myself to uh, come on to their um, weekly, which is great to hear that companies are having, actually not weekly, but daily um, cadence connections for communications, engagement, um, and they're asking us to come on to be part of that, to um, help people with their mindsets, especially the extroverts that are home for this period of time to really come on and be a different voice for their company. So um, that's great that they're reaching out to us to be part of their companies, whether it's resilience or mindset or anything like that. But that's, uh, um, that, that's great that companies are doing that. They're also having um, company um, DJ dance parties with their whole families, which is awesome to hear. They're having happy hours with their companies. They're having coffee with their companies. So it's really interesting to hear of all the things that these companies are doing to stay innovative, engaging their employees. Um, but they know this is a long haul here through the month. So they're trying to be, you know, at some point that's going to wear out um, for some people. So they're just trying to, you know, sliding, sliding us in and, and all of that. So it's, it's really good to hear how innovative companies are getting and keeping people engaged. Exactly. And thanks. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, we, we are, we are getting um, a lot of inquiries about how to, you know, keep people engaged, effective, enthusiastic. I mean, think about it in terms of like three E's, engaged, enthusiastic, and effective. And sometimes it is that outside voice that can make a huge difference with a team, with an organization, as well as with individuals. And so, you know, we at On Point are also trying to be as creative and as innovative as possible. And it's wonderful to see sort of what other organizations are doing. So there's, there's a lot to celebrate right now. And um, it's certainly wonderful to focus on that. So we're gonna dive into the four tips of the day. And so this speaks directly to also what Pam was talking about. Number one is to reevaluate, reexamine, and reassess. And what does that mean? So, you know, so during this whole sort of career management series that we are working on, I'm targeting also people who are newly working from home, who are working for themselves and who might be looking for work. So all three categories, and this idea of reevaluating, reexamining, and reassessing applies to everyone. So for instance, if you are now, you know, find yourself working from home, or you find yourself uh, maybe furloughed, or somebody who is, you know, working for yourself, now is the time to sort of think about all of these things. One is, is what I was doing let's say a month ago, is that still what I want to be doing? If you were an accountant before and now you find yourself working from home or you're a furloughed or you are now you know, fully transitioning, do you still want to be an accountant? Okay. If you were in operations, if you were in hospitality, if you were in event planning, if you were in travel, if you know any sort of profession, now is the time to sort of take stock. I am a big believer, pandemic or not, that your career choices should be in a constant state of reevaluation. Just because you graduated with a certain degree, okay? I graduated with a political science degree. Why? Because I really enjoyed the subject. I really enjoyed the content, loved my professors. Did I go into a profession, a chosen profession that utilizes those skills or that knowledge on a daily basis? Probably not. But again, that was that reevaluation. We all grow, we all evolve. So is what you were doing before, one, still what you wanna be doing moving forward? Okay, now is the time to take stock of that, to really think about what you wanna do next. And sometimes that choice is by choice, that reevaluation period, that reexamination period. And sometimes that choice is made for you. One, if you are furloughed, 
if you are laid off or if your position no longer exists. Okay, so that's the other sort of question. So one, the first question to ask yourself, do I still wanna do that? Do I still wanna be that profession? Do I still wanna be engaged in, in those activities on a daily or on a regular basis? Two, is that profession still going to exist in the same way when this is all over? Who knows, right? So a big part of this is about being super creative and innovative. So in addition to the myriad of things that, that Pam and I do, we are also both professional speakers. And so obviously we know a lot of professional speakers. And so here's a very scary thought for a lot of our speaker colleagues right now, is that there are a lot of people that what they do, they speak on stage, you know, let's say 50 to 100 times a year. And so their livelihood, their revenue stream is directly tied with the opportunity to literally stand on stage in front of a live audience. What happens when that industry no longer exists at the moment? Okay, there are no live events at the moment. And so this idea of re-examining, reassessing, is there something that you can do in terms of, you know, additional revenue streams? You know, you've got to get creative, okay? If you are servicing clients and you're used to being face-to-face -face, or you had one, uh, one product or one line of services, you need to reassess. What does the market need right now? How can I serve my clients with the same level of service, the same sort of um, kind of level of care and customer service that they are used to, but maybe in a different way? Maybe it's an online service. You know, a lot of what Pam was sort of talking about is our ability to reassess what do our clients need? Our clients need something different today than they needed a month ago. So now more than ever is that time. And I will say too that Pam and I have the, the advantage, if you will, every single day we are meeting to brainstorm, to be thought partners, to put on our creative thinking caps, to reevaluate, reexamine, reassess what we are doing. How can we do it differently? Is this what the market needs right now? Is this what our clients need right now? And if you don't know, now's a great time to ask those questions. You know, think about when you're having conversations with your boss, what can I be doing? What can I be doing differently? What can I be doing next? to continually provide value, all right? And same thing with your clients. And if you are looking for a job, also think about creatively, what does the market need right now? So this brings me to our next point. And this is all about thinking about your transferable skills right now. And oftentimes, look, I mean, I, I always say this, I've been in the career business since the dinosaurs roamed the earth, literally. It's been more than 25 years. And yes, there are some people that when they move from, from career, when they're managing their careers and they move from job to job or profession to profession or industry to industry, sometimes it's apples to apples. You know, if you were in sales in one company and then you're in sales in another company, okay, that makes sense. But what if you are thinking about what you're going to do next after you have re-examined and reassessed and reevaluated? What happens if your, your chosen profession no longer exists in the same way? Now it is about putting together a transferable presentation about yourself so thinking and what are transferable skills transferable skills are those skills that you take with you from career to career from profession to profession from industry to industry they are industry neutral 
meaning they exist everywhere. So how do you, one, identify your transferable skills, and then how do you leverage them? And so I am just going to take event coordination right now as an example. So if you were an event planner within a company, all right, right now, not a lot of events happening. They are on hold right now. So if this is about sort of still being able to demonstrate value to your organization or value to your clients, if you are an independent or a cons you know, an event consultant, okay? So the idea about event coordination or event planning, the emphasis is on the planning or the coordination part. So think about other things that you can plan, other things that you can coordinate, other things that involve logistics, other things that involve bringing multiple parties or people together for a common purpose. Okay, let's take another one. What about problem solving skills? You know, the seat that you sat in a month ago, if a big part of what you did was around problem solving, okay? Think about the fact that right now, this is probably, those skills are gonna come in handy and then some. But don't take for granted the fact that, you know, pr solving problems was just something that you did, okay? It was just part of your job. Now, it could be a primary focus of what you do when it talks about sort of the value that you bring. All right, how about computer literacy or IT or technology? You know, so maybe before you, you know, a big part of what you did was, you know, you were in the IT department of your organization and everybody is furloughed right now. All right, so just because let's say that your IT focused on a particular software program. All right, that was unique to that organization. You know, so maybe it was, um, I don't know, clearly IT is not my area, but you were absolutely, you were the, uh, you know, the PowerPoint master. You were all about spreadsheets. You know, you were the one that fixed everybody's computers. You're on IT support those skills are directly transferable to other areas. Think of technology right now. People need help with Zoom. People need help with, you know, setting up online programs. You know, so this is where, again, think about being creative. Identify your transferable skills. Think about what the market needs right now. All right, creative thinking, interpersonal skills, you know, team management, um, working well under pressure. There's a lot of pressure right now. So if this is one of your transferable skills, if this is something that you are innately good at, you know, why not be the team lead right now for, you, for your team or for your organization and to sort of bring a sense of calm organization to what is currently happening. All of these are transferable and a really, and it's also not only just transferable, but an opportunity for you to shine, an opportunity for you to highlight some strengths that you have, because these are all strengths. Okay, another way to think about transferable skills are strengths, superpowers, if you will. Okay, and so matching up the opportunity with a superpower is oftentimes sort of that sweet spot, that magical moment for you to really be able to take your career in a new direction, in a different direction, um, in a better direction. So 
transferable skills right now is an amazing opportunity for you to sit down, put pen to paper, and really think about how to kind of bring all of these to light. So another way to really think about um, sort of marketing yourself right now, packaging yourself right now is, and I'm a big believer of this, I talk about this all the time, is to keep a brag book. So what is a brag book? A brag book is a success journal. This is a record, a log, a file, a folder. This is a way for you to capture all of those successes, accomplishments, achievements that you are doing right now. And so, and I know, you know, what in our first session together, we talked about this idea of redefining success. And so I don't want you to think that just because you are working from home, just because your life might look a little different, just because you're furloughed, just because you're in transition, I don't want you to think that you, one, are not achieving anything and that you don't have any successes worth mentioning or that the temptation is to minimize everything that you are doing. Quite the opposite. This is where you want to dial up the brag book activity. So typically I talk about you know, keeping a brag book and a log and a record of what you're doing, maybe on a weekly basis. Reflect on the week. What were all of those great successes? You know, how did I make my company money, save them money? How did I streamline processes? Did I deliver that project on time, under budget? Oh, I'm going to print off that raving email that I got from a client and put that in my brag book. You know, I expanded my client base. I closed a big deal. You know, all of those go in the brag book. So now the brads may look a little different, but they're equally important for three main reasons, okay? One, if you are now finding yourself working from home, I hope, as Pam mentioned, that you are having regular communication cadence with your boss, okay? And if you are not, I encourage you to initiate regular communication with your boss whether it's via Zoom would be my first choice, at the very least via email. And part of that communication should be updates about what you are doing, what you are accomplishing. Essentially, your brag book. Here's the value that I bring. Because here's what I also want you to remember, that even in the best of times, we all suffer from amnesia. So, if you are trying to update your boss on a regular basis, I beg you, please do not try to rely on your memory. Keep track of what you are doing so you can share that in an email, so you can share that you know, over your Zoom meeting. It's really important today more than ever that your boss knows exactly what you are doing, how productive and effective you are working from home, and the value that you are bringing. And here's why, okay? I am a realist, so I'm gonna always give you the real truth, is that your position may not exist after all of this is done, or it may look different, or your organization may have to make some really hard decisions. Now we're moving forward about who they keep, okay? So let's say, a department of, and I'll go, and I just always go, I'll go back to event planning. All right. Let's say there were 12 people in event planning. The organization may make some tough decisions. They may only bring back two people. Okay. So it may go from 12 to two and the same may be in sales and the same may be in, you know, operations or marketing or any of the other departments. So if, you're, or if your department is going to go from 12 to 2, what can you do to stay in front of your boss in a positive way? And here's the continued value that I bring. So you are in the running for those two spots. Your brag book 
is going to make that difference. Second big reason why the Bragg book comes in handy is as we talked about the last couple of times, when you are updating your resume and your LinkedIn profile, you want to highlight all of those accomplishments. Yes, even during the pandemic. What have you been doing? What are all of those wins, those successes that you can continue to highlight? And so, Shar, to your point, um, you know, every time that you learn something new, you develop a new skill, you have a new tool in your toolbox, you receive a new certification during this time right? A new degree. All of that is, you know, one, that's part of your Brad book, but then you can easily insert that into and update your resume and LinkedIn profile. Super easy, right? And then the last reason why a Brad book is so important is because it boosts your confidence. And why is this so important? So this is so important Again, even during the best of times, even during the, mo the most booming of times, how many of you, when everything is going right, you even still have a little bit of a dip. You have an off week. You suffer from that amnesia that I talked about, and you're having a hard time remembering anything good that you did. Any of those peak performance moments, any of those highlights, any of those rock star moments when you are absolutely at your best. What a Brad book does is it gives you a great way to remind yourself. So when you're feeling low, when you're struggling, again, whether you are working from home and you are feeling disconnected from your workplace, you're feeling disconnected from those peak performance moments, whether you're working for yourself and you know, struggling to figure out how you're going to keep your business afloat or whether you are in transition and thinking about how am I going to land a job? All three of those areas. The number one thing that bosses look for, that clients look for, and that potential hiring managers look for, the number one quality by far is confidence. And so when you need that boost, when you need that jolt, when you need that reminder of how good you are and what you have done, I want you to be able to go back to your Brad book and have that long laundry list of all of those high points, okay? So this is another time that I wanna open up the mics. And so I want somebody to share something from your brag book, all right? A highlight, some more good news, specifically around a success, maybe a raving email that, that you received, a compliment from your boss, something that you did with your team, you know, something that you're super excited that you accomplished, something that will go, that is brag book worthy. Who would like to share? Hey, it's Devin from Texas. Can you guys hear me? Hello, how are Hello. you? I'm good, I'm good. I put it in the chat, but um, just to share, it was just something that really like put a lot of pep in my step. One of our executive directors had sent me a note about um, just, she hadn't really had the benefit of having a project manager kind of shepherd her efforts in the past. And she just really, appreciated um, the fact that I can keep the team, you know, organized, ask great questions, make great points, just why people are kind of still processing and make sure that we're kind of pressing forward and keeping that momentum going, um, especially with the complexity and the challenges that we're, we're kind of managing and, and leading through right now. And so, and she even said that it it helps kind of her check her own tone and shadow, like especially during this time, like as a leader. And it just was a little note, probably took her, you know, five, 10 minutes to craft and, and send out and it really like made my entire day. So I was just encouraging, like if you are a current leader or just kind of supporting other work or even just peer to peer, um, just taking a few minutes to send those types of notes, it really does go a long way, especially right now, because I was actually having a pretty rough Friday. Um, so just wanted to encourage you guys to share those things and those little nuggets with your team, but just how much it meant to me um, at that particular time. So 
it was pretty special. So first of all, congratulations. And that is a perfect example of one, uh, sort of the value of a Brad book and being able to capture those moments and how you can use that information for yourself. And I think it was also revealing in a couple of ways. One, it's, yes, it boosts your confidence and it gives you that, that jolt that we all need right now. But it's also really illuminating if you going back to that idea of transferable skills and thinking about what are my superpowers? What am I really good right now at, at right now? What is valued right now? And so what was shared with you in such a you know, really sort of critical way was you know, project management. Okay, that's needed. That is valued. That is what people are appreciating right now. And use that run with it and you know and really know that yes it goes in the brad work it's a great transferable skill it's a superpower but something else that you said is super important as well and where a lot of people are accustomed to you know working with people on a regular basis live in a workplace and oftentimes those comments and that feedback you would would receive in real time maybe in passing, in the hallway, during a meeting, things like that. Now more than ever, really being able to provide those, those comments, the feedback, those positive nuggets in an email will mean more now than ever. So yes, it's wonderful to receive, but also remember there are people out there in your life right now that would love to receive the email that Devin just shared with us. So fantastic sharing. Somebody else? What else is going in your brag book today? Anybody? All right, continue to type away if you are typing in the chat room because that counts as well. So everybody's getting a brag book today. The fourth one is that is super, super important. And I talk about this a lot, but now more than ever, pay close attention to your executive presence. And the reason why this is important is because so much has changed oh, literally overnight. And you know, we're all sort of accustomed to a certain level of professionalism and a certain level of presence. And, you know, in our daily lives, let's say a month ago, in terms of our behavior and our communication and our image, the three main areas of, of executive presence, behavior, communication, and image. And so much of that has changed right now. And a lot of it has changed for the better, I will say in terms of, there's a lot more sort of forgiveness right now. There's a lot more sort of leeway. People are um, certainly more, more generous and more accepting about sort of people's circumstances and situations right now. And so the bar has definitely been lowered or certainly the bar has been changed, but I encourage you to not completely dismiss the fact that there is still a bar. Okay, I don't want sort of this new kind of way of life to you know, have a negative impact when it comes to presence. So I just wanna take the first one, which is behavior. And so a big part of executive presence when it comes to behavior is kind of that calming presence, right? That a lot of sort of what Pam talks about, that kind of grace under fire especially if you are in a leadership role or if you are taking a leadership position now with your team, let's say. You know, everybody is under pressure. Everybody is stressed out. But that ability, and you know, on the image that I always use is sort of the duck on the water. So, you know, the feet below the water may be going crazy, but above the water, calm, cool. I've got this, right? That calming, presence and so making sure that that still shows up and so you know whether you are working with your team whether you are working with your clients 
that ability before you hop on a Zoom call, just take a moment, center yourself so you're not showing up frazzled and you know and completely disoriented or you know and also make sure that you have an appropriate filter you are not oversharing every little thing that is going on in your life okay there's an appropriate amount of sharing and then there is an inappropriate amount of sharing even now so just being mindful of that paying attention to that and then on the communication side you know, making sure that that executive presence is still in play. So a big part of executive presence when it comes to communication is, are you still being super responsive in your email? Yes, we all have 9,000 other things that are going on right now and that are um, taking priority and that are derailing us and that are causing us to lose focus. But are you still responding to your boss in a timely manner? Are you still delivering projects on time? Are you still meeting deadlines? Are you still getting back to your clients promptly like you used to? And I would even encourage you, how about even faster, more promptly? Are you still making sure that your communication is professional? Are you still making sure that you're able to bottom line your communication? Meaning, is it concise? Is it clear to the point? Again, so many of us right now, you know, you can feel a little isolated, a little lonely. And sometimes there is that temptation to, to connect and to, sh you know, and to share stories. And here's what's going on in my life. And, you know, and, and my, my kids, and I, I don't know how to do third grade math. And, you know, all of those things, yes, time and place. But when you have that professional hat on, even today, I want you to make sure that you are paying attention to that executive presence, okay? Whether you are working from home, whether you are working for yourself and you're managing your clients, or what, especially if you are looking for employment and having online, Zoom, interviews right now super super important or if there's a recruiter that is reaching out to you make sure that you get back to to that person in a prompt and timely manner with your professional email voice intact and then the third one around executive presence is your image okay yes it makes a difference so even though we all don't have a glam squad that's not what i'm talking about but the given the fact that so much right now is you know is on camera let's say just at least pay a little bit of attention that you are ready to go think about it would i look this way would i act this way would i present myself this way if i was going to work all right exactly so the picture that i have up here if you were <laughs> if you were on a zoom call you know are your kids sitting in your lap? Do you look frazzled? You know, are you still in your pajamas? Look, and I'm saying you can have your pajama bottoms on, but what about the top? That professional presence is still super, super important and will go a long way. So I'm not saying that it is going to be exactly the same as it was a month ago, but just something to pay attention to. All right, so any questions on anything that we have talked about today or anything going on in your life that I can answer for you? Now is the Ask Amy portion. And I also, I'm so grateful too that so many of you have reached out to me over email. And yes, I will answer your questions. I will hop on a phone call with you if, if that's what it takes. So if you don't have any questions today or if there's something that you wanna share with me, or ask me offline, yes, I'm available to you. So any questions today? I have a question. Could you sure. ever be in a company that you're interested in? Could you ever be proactive in a subtle way in sharing some things that you know they're looking for? A step ahead, I don't wanna 
assume that it's me or I'm the one, but maybe a way of telling myself. Absolutely. A absolutely. I mean, so what you are just, so what you have now just sort of tapped on, I'll go back to sort of that right. transferable skill yep. section is problem solving. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, the list of pain points that organizations have are too many to count. Mm -hmm. Think about if you could position yourself, not that you can solve all the problems, but if there are some very specific problems that you can solve for them, absolutely. But here's how I would position it, okay? So if you um, are working for yourself, if you're a consultant, if you're a contractor, if you are servicing clients in that capacity, one way to sort of talk about it is, look, you know, I am already working with so many other clients and organizations and companies with this same issue. And I am able to solve this problem for them. You know, it has made a significant difference with this organization or with this team or with this company. If you are struggling or if you are thinking that this is a problem that you currently have or you're thinking ahead, this is a problem that you might have in the near future, you know, let's partner together to get in front of it and solve that problem for you. So it's a little bit of sort of social proof anecdotal evidence that you that you can bring even if you need to stretch that a little bit absolutely but right now if there is something that you can do to solve a significant pain problem because i will say right now um especially you know during this current climate if if the problem is not painful right now they're probably not going to look at it immediately or urgently but if it is a problem that is on fire, especially, or if you could trigger a little bit of that, absolutely be proactive, take the initiative, be that peace of mind, you know, sort of consultant or contractor for them. Think about it this way. If you can trigger sort of the, the emotional response of relief for somebody else, and even if in some of your messaging, would it make your life easier if I did X, Y, and Z? Would it help your team if I was able to do this? Right? Just literally think of somebody just kind of exhaling, going, oh, that would be fantastic if I could cross that, that off my list. Right? Does that help? Does that does that answer your question? Good. Anybody else? All right. Well, keep chatting. Any additional you know questions that you have, and certainly reach out to me directly. All right. To recap. Oh, this is career part four. All right. Number one: reevaluate, reexamine, and reassess your current situation, what you're doing, what you're gonna do next, what the market is going to bear, additional revenue streams that you can add to your business. Now is the time. Number two, identify transferable skills, okay, that you can currently implement or certainly anticipating what transferable skills are gonna be enormously important and valuable once we move through all of this. Number three, keep a brag book daily today, more important than ever. And for the, for the three reasons, so you can tell your boss all the wonderful things that you are doing, so you can update your resume and LinkedIn, and so you can give yourself that boost, that jolt of confidence when you need it during these really, really difficult, challenging times. And then the fourth one is to pay attention to your executive presence. You know, make sure that your behavior that your communication and that your image is still on point during this <laughs> unique set of circumstances that we are in. Not only will it pay off for you today, but it will definitely pay off for you in the very, very near future. It makes a difference.
so with that, I say thank you all so much. I will see you Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Don't be late. Sign up for the next session, the next video podcast that I will be doing on Monday. And I want to remind everybody that Pam is going to be um, leading her video podcast tomorrow, Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Pam, do you want to say a few words about your topic tomorrow? If I figure out how to unmute myself, um, <laughs> it's, uh, my themes have been around leading through a crisis and it's around the impact of hope and resilience. So it's the impact, um, I'll probably touch a lot on the impact of hope and resilience for ourselves and our own mindsets, but also how we, how we um, tr translate that also to the people around us. Exactly. And, and I want to encourage you, all of you, you know, Pam and I, we want to be a continued resource for you. And, you know, as she mentioned at, at the top of this podcast, I mean, this is one of the most relevant, urgent topics that organizations are asking us to come in and do internally for their teams, for their organizations, you know, to provide the greatest amount of value right now. And, and we are doing it for all of you. So please, I hope you will take advantage of it. I hope you will continue to share this information with your network. Have people go to onpointnextlevel.com to register for our podcast. We're on social media. We are here for you. So we will see you tomorrow for Pam's podcast. And, uh, and I will see you again on Monday. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, so much. Have a great rest of your week. And we will see you soon. Bye, everyone.